I'm a big proponent of esoteric drugism. And what that means is that the Hyperborean ethos should be easy enough for an illiterate step writer to understand. And basically, I can break this down into three tenets. Honor the gods, love your kin, and defeat your enemies. That is all you need to know from me. Everything else is just elaboration. I do not believe in being some grand philosopher chasing the universal truths, the realm of ideals, the perfect forms, moralizing and philosophizing about the perfect moral system. No, I don't believe in universalism. I don't believe that there is a perfect moral system for every culture on earth. Every bio spirit exhibits their own moral system and they do it differently. Our bio spirit is different in a lot of ways from a lot of other cultures. For instance, pedestry. That is just something that we find absolutely disgusting. You don't find instances of that in the North. And you find it in a lot of other places. Okay? This is something that we will never be bio-spiritually aligned with, and we kill people who partake. That's just the way it is. The same thing with the eunuch thing. The same thing with the sacrificing children to ball thing. We are not big fans of that stuff. And that's just our bio-spiritual manifestation. It's not rational. It's beyond, ra it's beyond rationale. We hate these things because it's against our essence. Nothing more, nothing less. We don't have to moralize. We don't have to philosophize about it. You don't have to prattle on about the forms, about the perfect ideals. We hate it because we hate it, and it is what it is. Stay away from perennialism. There is no perennialism. There is no universal truth. There is no universal justice. Justice is what we make of this world. We make the justice. The ones who have the power make morality. There is no morality. We made morality in Hyperborea because we were the powerful ones in that realm. The Yamnaya had their own morality that devolved into, or I should say evolved into the different branches and they constructed their own morality systems. And they were the ones enforcing that morality with the sword, not with Rational explanations as why you shouldn't be a degenerate. It wasn't, they didn't have books. Okay, everything was memorized in the North. Perennialism doesn't work. Here's why. A lot of these faiths, you have to have certain beliefs that cancel out other beliefs. For instance, in Christianity, you have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you can have no other gods before him. Otherwise, you go to hell for eternity. There's no way of weaseling your way out of that through Platon, for through Plato. Okay? There's no way of prattling on about the forms and the ideals that can get you out of that trap. Same thing with Islam. If you do not submit to Allah, if you idol worship, if you are pagan, that's the worst crime in Islam. The worst crime in Islam is being a pagan. Not being a Christian, not being a Jew. It's being a pagan. Go read the Quran and it will tell you in like the first page about the idol worshippers and how they want to get rid of them. That is their bio spirit. That is their ethos. It is what it is. I'm just pointing out that you cannot overlap Islam and Norse paganism. There's no perennial truth that binds these two very different bio spirits together. It's impossible. 
it's actually impossible, even if you want to use your little rational monkey brain, to figure it out some way to connect the dots. Good luck making it cohesive. It's not going to work. This is why I'm anti-intellectual. I like narratives. I like Homer. I like the Eddas. I like the stories that embody the heroic ideal. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of how morality surfaces and functions and, you know, binds us together in some universal humanity. I'm not about that. I don't care. I never will care. And if you want to use apologetics against me to tell me I'm wrong, you can find, prove me wrong. I'm still not going to accept it because I'm not a rationalist. I don't care about right and wrong in the brain of your human body. That's all of that is. Right and wrong is enforced by the sword. Now, the sword can enforce justice, which we, as bio-spiritual beings, align with. And that's what the Hyperboreans did. They had a justice system, obviously, in group morality, okay, not universal morality. That's the only moral system you can have on this world, is an in-group, honor-based morality. If you have universal morality, you're going to get trampled. You're going to get Neolithic farmered and be <laughs> left by the wayside. Life is about honor and fate. It's not about seeking knowledge and finding the perfect justice system and focusing on the soul and the ideal forms. I much rather be remembered as somebody brave than somebody smart. And I know it appears that I just have a YouTube channel, but my life, you would not believe if I told you the things about my life that have happened. And the highlights of my life don't come from reading and philosophizing. The highlights of my life come from adventuring. I love adventures. I love traveling. I love going to these ancient sites. I love cataloging ethnos when I visit these places, you know, seeing the people. That's what I love and remember in my life. Action is more important than contemplation. And right now I am taking a bit of an inward break, but eventually I would like to transition more into doing things with this channel, going places, and living more within the realm of action. Because that's more who I am. That's what I value more. There's not much more I can teach in terms of the Phoenicians and the goblins. I think I've really laid out something that makes sense. And it is valuable. I think a lot of the wheat has been separated from the chaff. And you don't. I don't want you guys to have to go down the rabbit hole like I did. I want you guys to just get, you know, tuned up as to what's going on and then live a life of honor and action. And the quest of your fate. Now, again, I believe in fate. I don't believe in this. You can overcome everything in life by, by will alone. I'm fated to be six foot three. I'm not fated to be six foot eight. I was fated to have brown eyes, not fated to have green eyes. I was fated to be male. I was fated to be can Canadian. There's so many things in our fate that we cannot outwill, no matter what. Now, will and chance, of course, have a place in this life. There is no doubt. 
there is no doubt. And other attributes contribute to life. Nobody really wants to talk about how valuable charisma is in this world. Everybody wants to talk about looks. It's all about looks. Charisma is one of the most powerful things on this planet. And the people who possess it, even unwillingly knowing, not knowing they possess it or not, they don't realize how powerful they are, how powerful this attribute is of charisma. And they were fated to have this charisma. You don't just learn charisma. You either have it or you don't. That's just the way of this world. doesn't matter how much you think, how much you read, how much you write, how smart you think you are. If you don't have the charisma to present those ideas, it doesn't matter. You're better off mountaineering than reading Plato. Nietzsche himself said, Plato is boring. Plato is boring. I don't care about the forms. I don't care about the ideas. I don't care about his super state that he wants to create. His autistic super state that he thinks that he was going to implement that never happened. Okay? Achilles is a much more interesting figure than Plato. Going against the gods, trying to rationalize them away into forms and ideals. This is heresy. And I will no longer keep my mouth shut about the platonic heathen heresy that is afoot. There's no point in trying to create these philosophical systems of perfect morality because there is no perfect morality. There's the axe, there's the sword, and the iron fist of the orc. That's it, guys. That's it. Now, the people with the iron fist, they make the rules. Sometimes I agree with those rules in history. Sometimes I really don't, as we can see with the Phoenicians. That's what might makes right really means. It's not might makes you. It's not just might. It's the might makes the right. It's the might makes the morality. That's what it's about. I want to live in a world of heroic action and myth. Not reason. Intellectual inquiry. Give me a break. That's cringe. All the great men of history. Now, I'm, I know I'm not a great man of history, and I never will be. But I can be a great man in my own little ecosystem. Now, were these people rational? Was it rational for Napoleon to become an emperor? Was it rational for Svetoslav? to wipe the Khazarians off the map. In fact, Svetoslav could have went south on his campaign and made a lot of money. Rationally, that would have made sense. But instead, his heroic ideal, his heroic impulse, his biospirit told him to wipe Khazaria off the map. And that's what he did. And that's why he's a hero. He's not a hero because he, you know, min-maxed his way through the campaign and got the most amount of loot out of it. No, he, he was not a rational man. He led an army, not from the rear, but he fought alongside them. He, he lived like a soldier. He didn't live like an officer. He was eating horse meat and drinking horse milk like the... Kurgan ancestors were doing thousands of years before him. He was LARPing farther back in time 
than modern people LARP today. And you want to make fun of LARPers. Yeah, LARPing is irrational. It doesn't make sense. Why would you want to dress like that? Why would you want to act like that? You look like a fool to rational people. Meanwhile, Sviatoslav is LARPing in the Bronze Age. It was rational con to convert to Christianity because you would have got access to the Byzantinian world. That was rational, but of course, human beings aren't these rational little robots. He was bio-spiritually invested in the old gods, and he kept that path. There was no other way for him. He could have brokered a deal with the Khazarians. He could have brokered a deal with the Byzantines, but he didn't. Was it rational for Titus to tear down Solomon's temple? He could have profited off of that temple immensely if he took control. Now, we'll get into the temple at a different time, and I've discovered some more things, but it's not about this rationale, guys. It's about action, heroism, idealism. Forms? What forms? What form do I have in common with somebody from like the indigenous people of Australia? What forms do we have in common? What universal truth do we share? I don't see it. I don't feel it. And that's fine. I'm not judging them for their biosphere. They have their own path. It's different from my path. It's different from our path. And if you're not Hyperborean, you probably feel it too. Maybe you're an honorary Hyperborean. And there's some parts of this that align with you. But I'm sure you have your own ancestral worldview too that you feel is different from this. And that's great. No. We can't all be the same. That's boring. That's a very boring world to live in. If we all have this universal justice, this universal virtue, the universal ideal of a good life, right? What did Varg say about the... Canaanite ideal life, you know, sitting on a long, comfy bench, sipping a cool drink, and getting fanned by beautiful women all day. That is their perfect form, their perfect ideal. And what would be the Hyperborean ideal? It would be Valhalla. Fighting, drinking, adventuring for all eternity after dying a glorious death. That's very different in terms of uh, an ideal, a perfect form. That's very, very different. And I don't know how you're going to square that circle for me. I'm not rational. I don't care about reason. I care about glory. I care about honor. Truth? Truth changes every decade. What is truth? But what they tell us is truth. Everything I, I learn, I take with a grain of salt. I know these historic texts aren't gospel, but it's a narrative. We don't know exactly how Sviatoslav lived his life. We have concepts of a plan. But we don't know what his real plan was, what his real world was. We, we have, I mean, we have his DNA. We have the Rurik's DNA. And that's what I mean about DNA. It proves a lot of things that it's kind of cutting edge right now. We're kind of in this cutting edge land where the DNA is proving a lot of these ideas we had about history. Right? We know he came, his ancestors came from Sweden. They were Goths on a heroic quest to create this grand 
trading empire. And that's where the Kievan Rus come from. It was, it's not just a story. It was real. That is why we need to have more access to the genetics of these historical entities so we can learn more. And, and I, I'm telling you guys, the more we learn, the more it's proving us right. We have our fate. Now, we can earn favor by, from the gods. We can. Some of us are born favored. Some of us earn favor. The gods, they're not all going to just be in love with us no matter what. We have to earn the favor or we have to be born with it. It is what it is. You have to do with your life and make your life what you want it to be within your own fate. I'm not fated to be something, you know, I'm not fated to be a demigod. I'm a mortal. I have to work within my own fate, my own stats, my own racial characteristics, my racial buffs, if you will. And that is just the way it is in this realm. I can't rationalize my way out. I can't think my way out of my skin. I can't think my way out of my build. I can't think my way out of my own intellect. If you want to go down intellectual routes, intellectual pursuits, books and whatnot, it's all fine and good. Obviously, I would recommend audiobooks rather than sitting and reading. And if you are reading a book, it should be a book that inspires you to do, to be, to become. That Faustian drive of becoming, that is the Hyperborean spirit, reaching for the infinite. We are Faustian. Right? Spengler said that there were three main civilizations right now. Okay? The Apollonic, the Mediterranean. The Magi of the Near East and the Faustian Hyperborean spirit, where we are fated to reach for the infinite, knowing that we cannot ever capture it, and that is our tragedy. Does that sound rational to you? Spangler was a genius and is considered one. That's not a rational take. We are in a series of ever becoming. We will never be us Hyperboreans. We're never in a state of being. Now he says the Apollonic people were more in a state of being. They were more favored to be drawn to aesthetics and being and chilling and napping and whatnot. But we, we don't have that. We have this drive. We can never settle. I can't settle. I can't stop. No matter what, I have to always go. I have to always improve. I have to always min-max. I have to always drive forward in life. That's not rational. Being Something rational would just be napping all day. Not caring about any, any of this stuff. Why would I care about ball worshippers because if it didn't directly affect me? That's not rational. There's a drive there. It's a it's a drive within our biosphere. We can never stop. And I never want to stop. I'm always going to be becoming. Do you understand what that means? Becoming is essentially leveling up, grinding. Not in the cringe, grind, rise and grind sense, but trying to improve your stats, trying to to reach farther and to go deeper within your own self. Whereas becoming is, it's more like, I would say being is kind of more feminine, right? You're just kind of there. You are what you are, your, your beauty your essence, it, it just is innate to yourself. And there isn't this, 
this drive to to find, to seek, to know, to do. You just are. And we just, we are not that. We just are not are. We become. That's why Spangler is such a genius. And we're going to look more into Spangler too, because he predicted a lot of things that we're experiencing right now. And so that's not rational. How is that a rational take? Becoming? Being? What does this mean? But there's a truth in it. There's a truth for us in it, not for everybody else. Other people are going to look at that and say, that is absolutely ridiculous. What are you talking about? Napping, becoming, what, what is this babble? Nobody else understands it. But if you understand it, you do. This is not, I'm not converting anybody here. I'm not ever going to try to convert or revert anybody. This is a blood memory. You either have it or you don't. There's no, I don't need to up the numbers. I have more numbers than I ever possibly imagined that would resonate with this message. This is, this is a blood calling. Okay. I cannot, I'm not going to try to rationally convert somebody. There's no conversion anyway. It's not a religion. It's a ethos. It's a spirit. It's a state of becoming. It's a reversion, actually, rather than a conversion. It's a reversion. And <laughs> reverting, right? How they say it's reverting to Islam. Well, you're going to revert to being a Hyperborean. I do not want to proselytize, convert, engage in apologetics, debate. There is no debate. You don't debate an axe. You don't debate an aircraft carrier. Okay? Debate implies that there's some shared truth amongst us all. I don't believe it. I don't see it. I don't feel it. And if you want me to have to read the whole Western canon to find this truth, when by the time I'm done, I'm going to be so over the top autistic that I'm just going to rationalize myself away anyway. Why would I do that? I gotta go in my backyard and swing a mace around for 15 minutes and sit down and read some Plato. That's why I think it's the continent. If you want to go into philosophy, if you want to go down that route, it's the continental Germanic philosophy. That's that's what I resonate with. I think that's what exemplifies the Hyperborean spirit the most. Okay, Spangler, Nietzsche, Heidegger, Schopenhauer. These people. Okay. If you read the Antichrist and you're still a Christian, then you are actually a Christian. If you read the Antichrist and you have questions, you're not actually a Christian. Okay. That's my. That is my only debate tactic, I will say, to a Christian person. Okay. If you can read the Antichrist and remain true in your faith, then you're actually a Christian, and you know what? Good for you. I don't really care. This is what we believe. This is what I believe. I don't need to convert people. I don't need to save souls. Okay. Not saying that we don't have a sense of justice. We don't have a sense of morality. But for me, you cannot separate revenge from the equation of morality. In fact, I think revenge is the basis for all morality. That's how blood feuds start. If you lay hands on our family members, we are obligated by honor to have to retaliate. Otherwise, we lose our prestige, we lose our standing, 
And now you can do whatever you want to us because there's no retaliation. That's why revenge was one of the best moral systems, I think, ever. Okay? The Abrahamics, they put their, they put their women in sheets and treat them like property, but if you did that in the hyperborean world, you know, if you dishonored a family member, be them male or female, heads would have to roll. They had to roll. Otherwise, you were screwed. You had no more standing anymore. You had no more prestige. You were seen as a weak family. And that's what kind of kept everybody in check, is that fear of revenge. Turning the other cheek was the basis of ruining morality. There is no morality if you turn the other cheek. There's only morality if there's revenge or a slight. Now, be that being a vergilt payment or a blood payment. But to me, that makes more sense to me personally than any type of forgiveness. How do you forgive somebody for, how do I say this in YouTube terms, violating a female member of your clan? Do you turn the other cheek or do heads roll? If head roll is your answer, you might be more inclined to be a Hyperborean. Just letting you know. Because heads rolling is my initial thought. And actually, this morality does still pervade within us. Despite turning the other cheek being this virtue that was trying to be you know, hammered into us. I know many instances of people doing backyard justice, so to speak, when people within their family were violated. It's still around in this world. You can't escape it. Because it's part of our biosphere, again. No matter how much we try to put on a veneer of forgiveness and love and universal morality... The bio spirit always shines through. Thank you for listening. If you like this, give me a like, subscribe, and I got a whole catalog of Hyperborean knowledge for you guys. Thanks a lot. See you next time.